Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Technohead. Today, we're talking about Atari 2600 games. But we're not talking about just any Atari 2600 games. We're not talking about common games like Asteroids over here. Today, we're gonna talk about the top 25 most valuable and collectible Atari 2600 games of all time. I've been thinking a lot about Atari 2600 games and how their value might have changed since the time that I first started collecting back in the late 90s. The problem with that is that there aren't a lot of online resources that have price guides that include information from that time, so it's hard to see how the value may have changed over the years. Luckily, I have this book, which is called Collecting Classic Video Games. Now this book was published in 2002 and it includes a price guide. The exciting thing about that is that it means that I have a price guide from exactly 20 years ago. So we can use this price guide to see how the prices have changed from those days until today. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the 25 most valuable Atari 2600 games listed in this book in 2002. And I'm gonna use the prices on pricecharting.com today in August, 2022, to see if somebody had bought those games back in the day, if that would have been a good investment, if the prices would have gone up, gone down. We'll just take a look at how things have changed over the last 20 years. I'm also going to include the rarity listing from rarityguide.com so we can take a look and see whether or not rarity plays a factor in the overall value of these games. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the top 25 most valuable Atari 2600 games from 2002 and see how the prices have changed in the last 20 years. At number 25, we got a game called Surfer's Paradise, but Danger Below. This is an interesting game where there's sort of a surfing mini game you can play, and then there's some platforming where you're kind of searching around for hidden treasure and that sort of thing. Looks like an okay game. It was $190 back in 2002, but it's fallen to $91 in 2022, which means that this game has lost about 51% of its value. Space Master X7 is up next. Uh, this game had a 2002 price of $95 and a rarity of $59. Sort of a Yars Revenge style game uh, with some like space combat and fighting through a shield and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, this game went from 95 in 2002 to 59 in 2022, a 37% loss in value. Next up, we've got Room of Doom. Now, Room of Doom is sort of a Berserk-style clone. Uh, back in 20, uh, 2002, this game was 110 bucks. However, it is now going for, let's see, 70 bucks. So it's lost about 36% of its value. This game's rated at a 58% rarity. Now, not all, all these games have lost value, so don't lose hearts. You know, some of these have gone up. Next up, we got Clax. Clax was one of the last games to be released for the Atari 2600. And actually, I've seen some people report that it never really got a boxed release. However, there are some complete in box listings on price charting. In 2002, it was 65, and it's currently listed in 2022 as being CIB at $57. So it's lost about 12% of its value. It is not listed on Rarity Guide, though. Next up, we've got Video Jogger, which was a weird game that came with a jogging peripheral far before uh, the Wii Fitness Board or anything like that. In 2002, this game would run you about $120 complete, which I assume means that you needed the peripheral to come with it. And it's got a little bump. In 20 years, it's gone up 10 bucks to $130, or an 8% increase in value. Way to go, Video Jogger. Now, we're not gonna get any video for this one. This is Beat 'em and Eat 'em, which is one of the three pornographic video games on this list. This game has a rarity of 68. And in 2002, uh, this game was 75 bucks. These things were sold in like adult video stores and porn shops at the time, maybe through mail order. Nowadays, a copy of this game is gonna run you 99 bucks. So Beat'em and Eat'em has gone up 32% in the last 20 years. 
followed closely by another porn game. Uh, this one is a split game between Cat House Blues and the Philly Flasher. This particular game would have run you about 75 bucks at your local, uh, you know, adult bookstore back in 2002. And today, if you wanted to get your grubby little hands on one, it'd be about 128 bucks. So it's gone up 71%. It has a rarity of 70, so it's slightly more rare than the other game we saw uh, of the same ilk. Tapper, the classic midway game Tapper is coming in with a rarity of 58. This game in 2002 would have cost $75 complete. Um, however, I do think it's gone up in value. Let's take a look. Where's Tapper sitting now? 149 bucks today. That's a 99% increase in value. A great game, definitely worth the price. Not sure if the 2600 is the way I'd play it, but I'm sure it's fun nonetheless. Coming up next, we've got James Bond 007. This game has a rarity of 65. So as you can see, it's less rare than some of the games we've had previously, but it still was more expensive in 2002. In 2022, this thing is going for 152 bucks CIB on price charting. That's a 103% increase in value. So this would have been a good game to pick up back then. Next up, we've got Laser Gates. Laser Gates is sort of a scramble or a similar side-scrolling game where you shoot your way through gates, kind of like the, uh, the OCP level of the Tron arcade game. In 2002, this game would have cost you 65 bucks. Nowadays, it's gonna cost you 151 bucks, and that's a 133% increase in value. This game is only a 51% rarity, so not as rare as some previous games. The next game, Rescue at Terra One, has a 2002 price of $240. This is a very hard game to get your hands on. It's sort of an asteroids-like game where you're flying through debris fields and trying to rescue a uh, satellite, as you can see from the gameplay there. This game is $607 today, 153% jump. Uh, it's an 87 in rarity, very rare. Next up, we have a weird game based on the Halloween horror franchise. Uh, this was another game that was kind of a mail order type thing. There's two horror games on this list from this company. In 2002, this game would run you $125 complete in box because it is very rare at 83. And today it runs for about 324 and that's a 159% increase. So if you find one at your local swap meet, make sure to pick one up. Following this is the sequel to the classic Minor 2049er. Many of you probably have Minor 2049er in your box of Atari games. This one is slightly more rare. It has a rarity of 66. In 2002, this would have cost you 155 bucks. However, today in 2022, the price of Minor 2049er Volume 2 is $402, giving you a price increase of 166%. Magic Card, which is not actually a game, but was like a programming tool for the Atari 2600, is a very rare game. Uh, its rarity is at 66, and its price in 2002 was $850. Um, I had a very hard time finding video for this. The, I'm not even sure if this is actually the Magic Card 9 on the screen, but today it would cost you $2,381 to get a complete in-box copy of this game. That is a 180% increase over its 2002 price. And here's the last porn game, uh, Custer's Revenge, a game so repugnant that I definitely was not gonna put any video in here. This game has a rarity of 68%, or 68, uh, and the 2002 price is 65 bucks. And today, this thing would set you back $207 and that is a 218% increase over its price in the last 20 years. Next up, the companion piece to Halloween is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, another game based on a horror film from the 70s. Uh, this game, as you can see, is based on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In 2002, it would have cost you 125 bucks. It's got a rarity of 78. And today, if you wanted to get a copy, this would cost you $427. Uh, 
That's a 241% increase in value. Hot damn. Look at that. Next up, we've got Stronghold. Stronghold is an interesting game. It looks a little bit like a Robotron game. I, I was watching the video and I couldn't quite figure out what you were supposed to do. In 2002, this game was $250. It's very rare at a 94 uh, rarity. And today, if you wanted to get your hands on one, it would cost 855 bucks. That's a 242% increase in the last 20 years. The Music Machine is a game that was only sold in religious or like sort of like Bible stores. It was a game for kids, and the idea was that you were uh, catching God's love or something like that, and and you were catching like doves and things along those lines. Uh, basically, this is like a clone of Kaboom, more or less. It was 500 bucks back in 2002, and it's $1,825 today to get your hands on a box copy. That's a 265% increase. Next up, we've got Cake, uh, Cake Walk, which is uh, sort of a tapper clone where you're a chef who is trying to bake cakes and move them down a conveyor belt. Looks like a fun game. I've never played it. Back in 2002, this was uh, $265 to get a copy of this game. And today, if you wanted a copy, it would be $1,042. $1, That's a 293% increase in the last 20 years. Cakewalk, what a game. Next up, we have Quad Run. This is another late release, and uh, I believe this was a game that was only available via mail order, so it is pretty rare. Back in 2002, uh, the price of this was $350. This is another game where it's possible that there wasn't actually a, like a real box copy available but it is listed on price charting as having sold for 1516 bucks that is a 333 percent increase in the last 20 years Woo. gas hog is a moon patrol clone this is another rare game coming in at 72 the 2002 price of this game was 165 dollars for a box copy. And if you wanted to pick one up today, a box copy is going to cost you $768. That's a 365% increase over the last 20 years. Up next, we've got Up and Down. Up and Down is another late release for the 2600. You can see it's got uh, sort of an RC program feel to it, but it's got inscrutable gameplay. I'm not sure what's going on there. In 2002, it would have cost you $125 for a copy of this. Uh, today, its value is 876. That's a 601% increase in value. So not bad for a Sega game, Up and Down. Condor Attack, uh, which like most Atari 2600 games has a much cooler box than its actual gameplay, it is essentially a Space Invaders clone. Uh, you're fighting Condors, or maybe it's kind of like Demon Attack or something like that. The price in 2002 was $250 for a box copy, and today the price is $1,949. That's a 680% increase. This is the penultimate game, Espial. This game is kind of like Gyrus. It's got sort of like a shooting mechanic where you're also bombing. It has kind of an interesting 3D effect for an Atari 2600 game. Back in 2002, the price of this game was 95 bucks, but today it would set you back $839. Wow, that's a 783% increase in value. And our final game, this is a game that might surprise you. It's not necessarily Chase the Chuck Wagon, but this is the game that I could see that had the largest increase in the last 20 years, and that was Sword Quest Waterworld. This game was only about 50 bucks boxed back in 2002. It is a rare game at 84, but today, if you wanted to get a copy of Sword Quest, you would have to set aside a pretty sizable amount of cash. A box copy of Sword Quest today is going to cost you $921, which means that this game had a 1,742% increase over time. 
that was it. The top 25 Atari 2600 games from 2002. This book contains price guides for other systems like the Atari 7800, the Intellivision, the ColecoVision, and even weirder things like the Bally Astrocade. I'm gonna be making a series of videos that will look at the most valuable games for those systems in 2002 and take a look at where their values are today in 2022. If you'd like to follow along with me as I take a look at these classic games, then please click the like button and subscribe. I'm going to be making lots more videos like this and other retro game related videos besides. I'd love to have you come along with me on this journey. Thanks a lot for checking out the video and we'll see you next time.